Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. I'm your host, Kerry Garrison, and today I'm going to show you how to add text and a callout to a tracked subject. Now, a callout is just a, a line that points from the text to the subject. It's going to be pretty simple, and it's going to look just like this. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, I have my footage here, and it's just a simple shot of me walking on a sidewalk. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure our playhead is on top of this clip. We're gonna go over to the Fusion tab, and I'm gonna move this stuff over here to the middle so I can see it a little bit better. Select the media in, hit Shift Space, type in TRA for our tracker. Now, there's a couple things about this particular shot that are gonna make me change some of the settings over here. And if we look, we change this view. I'm kind of uh, walking, so my head is bouncing up and down. And if I just did a basic track, I'm probably gonna get a lot of shake in the tracked text. So a couple things I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna change this to best match. And what best match is going to do is it's going to compare the pattern from every frame and compare it to the original pattern. If there's too much of a variation and it exceeds the threshold amount uh, by the match tolerance, which is that setting right here, Fusion will not reacquire the pattern on that frame. So this can help to avoid tracker drift caused by artifacts uh, such as shadows. And in this case, I know it's going to help because of the transition of going from the side to the back. So I'm going to actually pull this uh, pretty far down here. And my path center is going to be the pattern center. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our tracker. And I'm just going to select like my head and upper body there. And I'm going to bring in my uh, search frame because I know that doesn't have to be very big and I'm going to go ahead and uh, track forward. Now this should give us a pretty solid track I think anyway hopefully that's the whole goal of it and you can start with just the simple settings and if you're getting too much shake or too much drift try adjusting it to different, you know, some of the other settings like this one, best match. I just know, because uh, I've used the tracker a lot, kind of what's going to work in some cases and what's not. So I can kind of get there a little faster, but you kind of have to use the tool a lot to really kind of figure that out um, just by looking at a piece of footage. So go ahead and try things out first and then start uh, trying different settings. You don't need to go all the way to best match with a very tight tolerance because it's going to take longer to do the track. This is on a uh, 2017 5K iMac that's loaded with 32 gigs of RAM and this particular track is going to take um, about a minute or so. So it's not going to be super fast, it's not going to be super slow, but the more things you add, this, the slower it's going to be and if you're on a slower machine it's going to take a while. So just watching this preview, it does look like we have a pretty solid track that took a minute and 16 seconds. Not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the beginning. And I'm just going to add a text plus node. I'm going to put my name in it here. Carry. And attach that to my tracker. And nothing happens. Right. Where is the text? Well, on the tracker, make sure that's selected. We'll go up here to the inspector. And we're going to go to operation and change that to match move. Now I can adjust where I want that text to fly. And I'm going to position it kind of right next to me. And now let's go ahead and give this a shot. And see, we've got some pretty smooth movement. It is moving up and down a little bit because it's tracking my head. If I had it track my whole body, it probably wouldn't have been so bad, it would have been a little more locked on, but that big of a pattern would have taken a lot longer to track. So 
So sometimes you, there's a trade-off between the speed of tracking and the accuracy. But this is good because it's actually moving with me. So we're going to go ahead and keep it. I'm going to move back to the original frame. But I want this to have like a box from it, or a, I mean a line that's going from the text to me. This is what we call a callout. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new node, which is going to be a paint merge node or a mask paint mode, I should say. And from there, we're going to add a background so that we can add color to it. And those don't automatically connect, so you'll have to connect them. And I'm going to go ahead from there and add a merge node. And you'll see why here in just a second, because I'm going to take the text and merge it with the callout that we're going to make and attach that to the tracker. I'm going to go ahead and select the paint mask, even though I have the media out in this window. And uh, just to give us a little more breathing room here, Go to single screen here. There we go. Now with this mask paint selected, I can get these additional tools that are up here. We have multi-stroke, clone multi-stroke, stroke, and poly line stroke. Well, I'm going to use the poly line stroke because it's going to make things a little easier for what I want to do. So I'm going to click, which you see it created a Bezier curve. I'm going to hold down shift and click again, and then I'm going to hold down shift and go again. Now, if I continue to hold down shift, it's going to let me adjust this in 45 degree angles. If I let go, then I can do it at pretty much any angle. So I'm going to go ahead there and point that at my head. Come back over to the inspector where we have our brush controls, and I'm going to change that to a circular instead of a soft. So it's a little more edgy there. And I'm going to crank the size down so it just becomes a line. And then I'm going to go to my background node and I'm going to change that to white so it kind of matches. Um, I'm still thinking that line is a little too thick. So back over here and um, there. Much better. Now because I have this mask paint which allowed me to draw it going into a background, into the merge, and the text going into the merge, everything coming from the merge into the tracker is going to track along with me. So let's go ahead and hit play. Now, you can see I'm getting pretty slow playback on here because now I'm tracking multiple things and moving them uh, in conjunction with each other. So this is gonna give me a feel for it, but it's not gonna play back in real time. So one thing we can do, I'm gonna go ahead and save this, Command S, and I'm gonna to go to my Resolve settings, my preferences, gonna to go to my memory and GPU, and look, I am maxed out. I have my Resolve memory set to 24 gigs and my Fusion memory cache cranked all the way up, and it's still playing rather poorly. So the only other thing I can do is let it render so I can see what that's gonna look like. So I come over here to the edit page and you can see it has the render bar on here, the red line, and the blue is what's uh, now being pre-rendered. And when this is finished, it should play back nice and smooth so long as everything is nice and happy. We'll let, we'll let that finish there. All right, it's finished. Now we're gonna play and look at that. We have text and a call out pointing to a tracked subject. So what did we learn today? We learned, uh, if you hadn't already known how to do a tracker, we now have a, we have our tracker tool. We've learned what some of the settings are and how to kind of smooth things out sometimes by using best match with the match tolerance setting. And then we added a call out and we drew that using the mask paint tool going into a, the background so that we could change the color of that line. And then those into a merge, everything from the merge into the tracker is going to follow whatever our track was. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
be sure and click the like button and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click the bell icon to get notified every time we put out a new video. If you didn't like this video and you want to do a thumbs down, feel free, but please let me know in the comments what you didn't like about it. And if you really didn't like it, click the dislike twice. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. Be sure and check out my title packs and lower third packs at kerrygarrison.com. There is a link in the description. They're on sale right now for only $9.99 for all the different title packs and the new lower thirds pack. So check those out, kerrygarrison.com. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.